You see Santa Claus tonight. You better run, boy. You better run for your life. Here's your Christmas spot on the NECA Toys Silent Night, Deadly Night, Retro Cloth, Billy Chapman. Years later, after witnessing his parents' murder by a robber in a Santa suit and then being raised in an orphanage by an abusive mother superior, the tormented Billy goes on a murderous rampage dressed as Santa Claus. And Denise had been hung on the antlers with care. We could all tell that Santa had already been there. First, let's grab the tape measure and let's see how tall the retro cloth Billy Chapman stands. Being that I don't want to get on the naughty list, I'm not going to fit. We've already looked at this figure a couple of times on this channel, the last time about three or four years ago. So I thought it'd be a perfect time, considering that the makers of Terrifier want to reboot Silent Night, Deadly Night. We can only hope it's going to be as good as the original. It's never going to be as good as the original. Needless to say, though, the retro cloth Billy Chapman stands at eight inches in height, or the killer dressed as Santa stands at 20 centimeters tall. As we slash through the seasons, NECA's helped with our holiday hackers. At the very beginning of the killing calendar, of course, we celebrate Valentine's Day. You know, what a better way to celebrate the season of love by having a miner coming along and cutting out your heart. Here's the retro cloth Billy Chapman, along with the retro cloth miner. Depending on where you live, you would celebrate either Thanksgiving in October or in November. Either way, you're probably thankful for the fact you haven't crossed paths with this guy. The killer from Thanksgiving, here's the retro cloth John Carver. And of course, to celebrate Oh Hallows season, I chose Michael Myers here from the 2018 film. Then to jump full swing into the festive season, if we are going to be talking or having a conversation at least about Billy Chapman, we have to also be having that same conversation about the garbage killer, Ricky Caldwell. And also as well, we did get ourselves a somewhat retro cloth release that is courtesy, of course, of Elvira from Scary Xmas. Unlike his younger brother, Ricky, older brother Billy actually saw two official releases. The first one and the one that we're looking at here was only originally exclusive to Scream Factory where he had to order it directly from their site. Then he got followed up with a clamshell release that was widely available through retail markets and comic book stores. But the one that we're looking at in this review is though going to be the original Scream Factory release. The only thing that you could really say would be different between the two is just obviously brand new packaging for the clamshell release, but also maybe perhaps as well a slightly more updated paint scheme. One of the initial issues I had with Billy Chapman was the paint seemed a little more muddier. From what I've seen, I've only seen the clamshell release of him once at a comic book store. His face did seem like it was a little bit more sharper in features. I never, though, got the chance to pick that one up. I kind of really regret that I never grabbed that second release of, J of Billy Chapman. Either way, though, it seemed like the accessories are going to be the exact same between the two. The figure, first of all, does come include with his axe. Now, we'll say, though, that the axe, while having good sufficient amounts of blood on this, I don't think it's the most screen accurate. From what I've seen, obviously, I've seen the movie several times. It's an annual watch for me. The handle tends to be more of a reddish color than what we're getting treated here. The head of the axe also seems more of a black blade rather than the more gunmetal silver that we get here instead. I do appreciate, though, if, at least for the fact that there's blood on this, I'm sure this is just before he's going to cut the head off the, the top of the snowman. Now, I did want to bring in, though, the one that we got here from Ricky Caldwell. Between the two, I feel like the Ricky's is a more superior looking axe. Even though a lot of times this guy is really being relegated to the packaging, I only tend to really bring them out when it comes to Christmas time. And a lot of times after that, I usually just put them back in the box. So the one that we get actually for Ricky, most of the time is the one I end up displaying with Billy, just because I think it looks a little bit more screen accurate from the black blade down to the red handle. Billy's though, I don't think looks as accurate. Other than that, it's nice to include the fact that we actually get ourselves. We don't get the box cutter. I would have liked if we could have actually got ourselves the box cutter, but at least we get ourselves the axe. The figure also as well over here does come include with the Santa's hat. Now you could obviously display the figure with or without the hat. It completes obviously the more look of the killer if you have the Santa hat on top of his head. This can be effectively pulled off if you actually look at the way they've sculpted the head. If you look at the way that they've designed the hat here, see how there's sort of an indentation right here. That lines up basically. So you want to, when you're putting it down, you're basically going to want to put it on an angle. And it sits sort of to contour the lines of his wig. Now, it's not friction forced. I mean, I don't think it survived. Oh, will it? Oh, that's a Christmas miracle. Normally, it doesn't survive the blizzard test. It's just more of a case. I guess the more you, the more pressure you push down on it, the better of a job the hat seems to stay on top of his head. 
Uh, obviously, it does finish the look, though, better here of Billy Chapman. I don't know how anyone would mistake this guy for the true Santa. He only really has the beard when he's actually sitting down with the kids in Iris Toy Shop. After that, the beard is always down. How would you ever really look at this guy and mistake him for old Saint Nick? The sculpt for the face is really good. I think it does look like actor Robert Brian Will of uh, Robert Brian Wilson, who of course portrayed the role only in that first film, and then of course Eric Freeman took over the mantle, so to speak, in a crazier role of Ricky Caldwell. The actual sculpt of the face is really done well here. Again, I have seen the clamshell release of Billy Chapman, which I do feel like the face is maybe a little bit sharper in details. Some, though, of the older retro cloth figures from NECA toys tend to have a little bit more of muddier paint. I think by some of the comparisons that we've looked at in the past, like the reanimator, for example, Herbert West had one of the more inferior looking paint jobs. If I was to compare this with the earlier Herbert West, I, I would still say like this is a better paint job for Billy Chapman. I'd still love to get my hands on that clamshell release of him. Of course, he does have the beard there on the front of his face. Now, when you are moving his head around, a lot of times what will end up happening is the thing that almost just ended up happening. The hat usually falls off a lot. But there's some, the actual beard itself is a very hard plastic. So there's very little give in this at all. Um, of course, while I'm looking at Billy Caldwell, Billy Chapman, all I'm really thinking on in the back of my mind, though, is Mr. Seams! Mr. Seams! <laughs> Definitely have to get around to watching Silent Night, Deadly Night again. Let me know down below in the comments section if you guys watch Silent Night, Deadly Night 1 and Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, or if you only really choose just one. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, we all know, for the ones that have seen the film, it's basically just a retelling of the first film, including all the original footage. Then it basically carries on after that with the exploits and the killer rampage of Ricky Caldwell. All in all, though, a good-looking head sculpt. It really gives me now a chance to kind of go back and look at this guy again with a slightly more clear camera and better-looking light. Um, the actual body itself, now unfortunately, is using the old retro cloth style bodies, which means he has really little to no articulation here for the ankles. You can't really move, you can really move them up and down, but that's really about it. If we were to kind of take the hat off here for a second, and we just lift the beard up just a bit, he of course would have the Santa's belt all around his belt, all around his waist, but then he would have a Velcro jacket. Now, you can't completely take this off unless you took the belt off. Now, underneath that would be a pretty lean body. Uh, Robert's got a pretty muscular body anyways in the film, so like the, the more leaner looking Santa makes more sense. I mean, I don't think he necessarily needs additional padding, for example, in his arms, or, I mean, certainly in his body, because he's a little bit more of a muscular Santa. Now, of course, he does have the frills there down below here on his sleeves. He's also got a little bit of fur there on the tops of his pockets and the nice little trim that he's got around his jacket. Um, the only thing about it, that, though, is with the Velcro, the way they've made it, I would have loved if they could have made the Velcro, I think, in red rather than actually black. I don't know how easy it is, how accessible it is to get red Velcro, but I think red Velcro would have blended a little bit better in because you're always kind of really seeing this black line right here with the jacket folds over on itself. Down below, of course, we got ourselves some fur trim down at the bottom of his boots or just above his boots. And of course, if we lift those up here, you can actually see, yeah, there's Santa Claus boots is right there. Bootses, boots. I'm going to get on the naughty list for making up words here. But like the actual articulation is about the only thing here in the ankles that suffers the most. Everything else pretty much I can kind of get behind. I mean, he has the articulation where it counts. The only, th the only thing that's a bit of a bummer is the fact that this is an older figure and he is kind of really relegated to only just single hinges in his ankles. As a side note, though, I do hope that down the road we get ourselves another release of this guy, even maybe, perhaps, dare I say, an ultimate release. Don't think it's that far of an idea. We did technically get an ultimate release of the minor. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to think that maybe down the road NECA could release, providing, of course, they still have the licensing that is to not release an ultimate version of Billy Chapman. And I'm sure they probably could then use the mold again and just use it to release a Ricky Caldwell. Oh, fingers crossed. In the meantime, though, let's look at the articulation here for Billy. The top of the head, of course, is going to be on a ball joint. You can only really move so much of the head. I mean, back and forth is about all you're really going to be able to get. Moving it up and down, you know, if you blinked it, you would miss it. That's about as much as he can actually do. He does have a waist swivel um, because he's not using the newer body styles for the retro cloth figures. You can't really move the body up and down like he doesn't have a ball joint there. He does have hinges in his shoulders, so you can easily bring those out. You can bring them forward. You can bring them back. Good for cutting off the heads of bullies. Billy hates bullies. He has a swivel there in his bicep. He only seems to have a single hinge. Yeah, he only has a single hinge in his elbow. And his Santa gloves also rotate all the way around. For his legs, his legs split up. You can bring them forward. You can bring them back. There's a swivel cut there at the top of the thigh. Single hinge only for the knee. 
Um, you have no articulation at all for the top of the boot, but again, you only have just this. That's all you're getting here for the foot, for the actual feet. Uh, by the way, in case you're also curious, I don't know if anyone is, there's also peggles on the bottoms of his feet. Oh, no peggles on the bottoms of his feet. Which again, like the newer retro cloth figures would also have them. Ricky Caldwell also doesn't have holes on the bottoms of his feet, just in case you're curious. All in all, though, a nice looking figure. You know, again, like I got this one initially the moment Scream Factory dropped the announcement that they were going to be doing a retro cloth. I mean, I, I jumped right away to that site and I ordered myself the retro cloth release of him. Sure enough, he was end up being an exclusive. Down the road, he was released as a clamshell, more available widely. I mean, now he's probably going to be a little bit harder to kind of track down. I did see him once, once at a local comic book store. He, I picked him up, I looked at him, I thought to myself, you know, I, I don't really have the money right now to start splurging, splurging on Christmas figures. But in, in hindsight, though, I probably should have gone back and picked him up while he was still available. Of course, sliding this guy over and uh, reaching off to the side here, bringing in Ricky Caldwell. I feel like we should also, I mean, it's probably a long time coming that we could go back and look at Ricky Caldwell again. Essentially using, yeah, the same bodies. The thing about it, though, with poor Ricky Caldwell, like if he hasn't had enough problems on his own, the fact that that figure still still hasn't gotten a retail release, which we're probably going to be talking a little bit more when we look at the review of him. At the very least, at least his elder brother, his eldest brother, Billy Chapman, did see two releases, even though the one obviously we're looking at in this review is the one released by Scream Factory. Still, the accessory count is still pretty low on this guy. At the very least, I, you know, a, a, a box cutter, I think, would have come rather in handy. Again, at his disposal, the only thing he really has is just the axe, which, again, a lot of times when it comes to displaying this guy, I end up usually just displaying him with Ricky's axe, because I think it's really the better of the two. You're probably then asking yourself, well, what's, what's going to be displayed with Ricky? Ricky tends to be displayed with the gun. He comes with a gun. He comes with a gun. We're going to be talking about that, obviously, more when we look at him. You're safe now. Santa Claus is gone. Actually, not yet. As he's rotating on the rotisserie, you get one final look of what the killer looks like before he's going to go on his merry little way off to the orphanage and killing that blasted mother superior. Funny thing enough, though, is that while the figure does have a very lean body, they probably could have maybe given him a little bit more padding. Obviously, when he's in there and he's killing Tommy, he has, you can see that he's got a little bit more stuffing in his stomach area. I probably could be maybe go in there myself and add a little bit of cotton balls just to beef him up just a little bit. But I can kind of buy into the idea that this, he not really is supposed to look like a big hefty Santa Claus. Old Saint Nick, I don't think anybody would be looking at them and mistaking him for that. And yet though Cindy sees Santa Claus walking by her room and still thinks it's old Saint Nick. Of course, he asks her if she's been good and she says yes, then proceeds to hand her the bloody box cutter. Oh, I really wish I was getting the bloody box cutter. You know, the figure itself does really need an ultimate release. And while I was kind of thinking that in between takes, I was thinking like, what what, what would I include with an ultimate release of, of Billy Chapman here? I was thinking like the bow and the arrow, obviously from Iris Toy Shop, the box cutter also from Iris, obviously the axe that we see here as well. I don't really think, I don't know really what else I would have included. Maybe the decapitated head of the snowman as he makes his merry little way up to the doorstep of the orphanage. What other accessories would you like to see if maybe NECA gets around to doing an ultimate release of Billy Chapman? Let me know down below in the comment section. Even though we are kind of wrapping up things right now for Billy Chapman, I feel, I don't know, I've got the itch in me. Don't worry, I'm going to get it washed. I think I'm, we're also going to be looking at Ricky Caldwell. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be looking at Ricky Caldwell also this week. So make sure if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, yeah, hit this video with a like. You guys want to stick around for more so? I hope so. More festive stuff coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. Ho, 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 ho. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. <laughs>